Welcome to The Undercurrent, your source for occupied Tea Party and grassroots news. I'm Lauren Windsor. The Occupy movement celebrated its one-year anniversary on Monday, September 17th, 2012, with a week of educational workshops, a concert in Foley Square, and of course, civil disobedience. Monday's direct actions started at 7 a.m. at four convergence points within four protest zones throughout the financial district. The zones were named ECHO, Education, Debt, and 99%, based on the focus of each particular group of organizers. The People's Wall was conceived as a sitting blockade of Wall Street. However, tight security around the perimeter of the stock exchange effectively blocked off the area. A much more successful action called 99 Revolutions entailed roving bands of activists temporarily occupying intersections and building lobbies. The debt zone employed this tactic in the lobby of J.P. Morgan Chase and lost many members to arrest as a result. Code Pink, the Women for Peace protest group, coordinated an action called Bust Up the Banks. The women marched wearing bright pink bras to draw attention to the lack of accountability of Wall Street banking CEOs in the aftermath of the 2008 financial meltdown. Former U.S. Army colonel and retired State Department official turned peace activist Anne Wright stopped to speak with me. What would you say to people that, you know, claim that the movement's dead? Oh, it's not. We now have a new crop of uh, citizen activists that have been trained in the last year, have worked together, that know the issues, and are challenging all of these issues in their home, in their hometowns. So it's not dead. It's just that the physical location of a place like Zuccotti Park, the Empire, squashed that. That was easy for them to do. They they take back the physical space. They can't take back the, the spiritual and emotional and mental space that is uh, the heart of this whole movement. Clearly, protesters have not lost their focus on the banking industry, though it has so far evaded substantive governmental reform. Inextricably tied to the issue of banking is corporate money in politics post Citizens United. George Martinez, a political science professor at Pace University and former Occupy congressional candidate in Brooklyn, offered insight into Occupy, its place in elections, and getting money out of politics. What I first saw in that park was a space for transformational hopefulness. I felt that it was, uh, it was an obligation uh, as an activist, as an organizer, as a member of my community to participate in any which way I can. And at, at first it was just with a song, a hip-hop anthem. So it, it, did Occupy inspire you to run for Congress? Well, Occupy helped create a platform where grassroots horizontal organizing actually was a viable way to challenge the power of money over control of our elections. And we called our campaign Bum Rush to Vote. What are some of the key issues that, that you ran on? I will clearly get money out of politics. The morning's actions culminated in a convergence of the groups at the iconic Wall Street Bowl at Bowling Green, where I spoke with an original OWS founder, Radio Rahim. So we're very excited to be here to see the tourists looking the, right down the bowl you know we're winning. When you see this, you see this around here, we the little guys winning because we're just telling you the truth. Also present was Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein. We discussed her recent arrest for protesting faulty foreclosures at mortgage giant Fannie Mae. It's my running mate Sherry Honkala and I uh, were at Fannie Mae to stand up for two families, two women and their families who had been long-term uh, homeowners and stalwarts of their community. All those protections that were supposed to work didn't work and they were about to lose their homes. So we sat down at Fannie Mae and said we were going to stay there until Fannie Mae agreed to talk with them respectfully and to sit down and they refused to do that. So there were five of us that went to jail to protest that. A spokes council meeting took place across the street in Battery Park to debrief the morning's activities. We are the Affinity Group! We dumped the dough for donuts and coffee and set up a welcome stand for NYPD and thank them for blocking Wall Street. And thank them for blocking Wall Street. Moving the water through. Only got us cops. Only got us cops. So we broke up. So we broke up. We civilians. We civilians. To JP Morgan Chase. We threw confetti. We threw confetti. 
last speaker is veteran activist Lisa Fithian, whom progressive news magazine Mother Jones calls Professor Occupy. I caught up with Lisa after the Spokes Council. I've been out roving the streets of Wall Street, watching all these incredible moving groups spiraling, taking space, sitting down. What we envisioned is actually what we manifested. How many people would you estimate came out today? I think we got a couple thousand all told. You know, it's hard to say because we were never in one place. After the Spokes Council, the crowd moved to Zuccotti Park, dubbed Liberty Park, to converge with labor groups like the Postal Service Union, to eat birthday cake, and to continue spontaneous protests throughout the afternoon and evening. New York Times columnist Joe Nocera proclaimed the death of the Occupy movement in a September 14th op-ed. Said Nocera, for all intents and purposes, the Occupy movement is dead. Occupy is not as visible as it once was because of the breakup of the encampments. There is no physical reminder except for bodies in the street when protests occur. But Occupy changed the national conversation and revitalized the progressive movement. It's not a location. It's not an organization. It's a state of mind. This show is dedicated to bringing you the grassroots news the mainstream media ignores, whether that be Occupy, Tea Party, Libertarian, or any other. We want to be a platform for your voice, but we need you, activists and citizen journalists, to be our eyes and ears on the ground. Please submit your events, information, pictures, and video. Just follow the instructions below. If I can cover the event in person, I'll certainly try to do so. If we use your media, we'll definitely credit you. Take part in the revolution today. I'm Lauren Windsor. Thank you for watching The Undercurrents.